Madame Romansky? Madame Helena Romansky? Who are you? What do you want? I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am. My name's Kate Walker. I've come on behalf of Frank Malkovich. Ah, oh, Malkovich, the old son of a gun. Are you one of his relatives? Not exactly. He's a good friend of my mother's. He told me you might be here in Arrowbad. I'm American, a lawyer. To what do I owe your visit? You have come so far. It must be important. Indeed it is. I have very delicate and pressing business to attend to. I have just left... Later, my dear, later. I have a slight headache. This hotel mask they pinch so. I have to go in. Please, could you be so kind as to call my valet? Your valet? Of course. You, back here again? How dare you show your damn face round here? Get out of here immediately! Please, I absolutely must find... Miss Romansky! Oh, yes, I'm sorry. She managed to lie her way in here. Don't matter how vigilant you are, there's always one. Uh, but it won't happen again. She'll be out on her ear before you can say, uh... I hope she hasn't upset you too much. Oh, Felix. Stop being such a grizzly bear. This woman is my guest. She's your guest? But that ain't possible. This scandal didn't even know you three hours ago. Be quiet, Felix, before you offend someone. Miss Rubensky, please. This maniac turned up earlier and tried to wreck the fountain. If it wasn't for the... I said enough, Felix. Please treat Miss Walker with the respect befitting one of my friends. Don't touch and don't swear. Have I made myself clear, Mr. Smetana? Yes, yes, crystal clear, Madam Romansky. Please do accept my humble apologies. Very good, Felix. You may go now. Doesn't look like that worked. Doesn't look
No point weighing myself down. James, what are you waiting for? Don't tell me you didn't hear the bell this time. The bell did indeed ring, but it is very windy outside, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is a bit gusty. But what's that got to do with it? Madam doesn't understand. She says an automaton doesn't need protection, but my sister like the salty wind. I'm afraid to go out, you know. And if you wore my mask to protect you against the salt, would that help? Oh, most certainly. Katie Poo. So, have you met her yet? This Helena person? What would she like? Does she remember Frank? Hi, Mom. Yeah, sure. I met her and, yeah, she's living in Arrowbad. You can thank Frank for me again. I'll remember too, honey. So, what's Arrowbad like? Maybe Frank can take me there one day. It's this seaside resort, Ma, but it isn't what it used to be. You'd be real disappointed. Maybe you're right. So, when are you coming home? Is that mission all over then? Not really, Ma. I still haven't found the heir I'm looking for to wrap up the case. Helena Romanski's a kind of detour here. Listen, Munchkin, I get the distinct impression that you're being led up the garden path. Why don't you just come home, tell your boss this air just doesn't exist, that you've done all you can, et voila. Do you want me to call him for you? Ma, please, don't get involved. Looking for Hans Varlberg is what I'm being paid for, but I also just want to find him for myself. Honestly, you're just as stubborn as your father. Don't complain that your mother didn't warn you. Don't worry, I won't. It's a real honor to meet you, Madame Romansky. People have told me so much about you. Mm. People still talk about me. Oh dear. Of course. Everyone tells me how wonderful you were. How you were one of the greatest singers of the century. Ah, so I was, my dear. But surely you didn't come here just to dig up the past. Like I said, I'm a lawyer and... To tell you the truth, I don't know much about classical music. But after talking to Mr. Borodin and Mr. Malkovich, they really made me want to hear you. Oh, you are too late, my child. Ten years too late. And how is dear Frank? Do tell me. Oh, I am still angry with him for leaving like that to America. Don't be offended, but I never suspected those cowboys actually have an ear for real music. I don't think he sings much anymore. The odd gala, the odd charity event. Anyway, he sends his love. Oh, his love? <laughs> Do you hear that, James? There is someone who still loves me on the other side of the Atlantic. I never said they didn't, madam. What about this other gentleman? What is his name? Borodin? Do I know him? Yes, you once sang in Comcalsgrad. An incredible recital, if the director's account is anything to go by. If you only knew how moved he still is. He's another one who still adores you. I must confess that seeing one of my greatest admirers once more would do wonders for me, but... Ah, oh, my voice. It is so... Ah, I couldn't. I'm wrapped up in a case at the moment. And because of it, I met a certain Mr. Sergei Borodin, director of the Komkalsgrad Industrial Complex, situated to the northeast of here. Ah, oh, I remember that factory. <gasps> oh, a sad city indeed. <laughs> what am I saying? They all were. Madame Romansky, this Borodin is one of your biggest fans. 
if you could come and sing for him there, it would make one of his biggest dreams come true. Sing? Oh, my poor girl. I have not sung for years. Time has taken its toll. My voice is like the rest of me. Faded and wan, like my heart. Oh, aren't you going a bit far there? I bet you've still got a great voice. Oh, you are the sweetest cherry, my dear. I am not senile yet, but I look reality in the face every time I look in the mirror. And I can tell you, singing is something I did in the past. Madame Romansky, please understand I would never have come so far to disturb you if I didn't really need your help. I understand, my dear. But my health is failing me, as does my voice. Believe me, no one is sadder than I. Strange. I get the impression that Hans Vorlberg turned up here, too. You know Hans Vorlberg? Not exactly. I'm looking for him to sort out this inheritance case. But I've had to snoop around in his past a bit to get on his trail. And I guess he's kind of a close friend now. You knew him, didn't you? Oh, yes. I knew Hans Wollerberg. Do you hear, James? Oh, if you had had the chance to meet Hans. My Hans. Oh, my God. What has become of him? Where is he? As questions go, madam, that one is not without certain complications. I'm sorry, but I have no idea. That's the goal of my mission, to find Hans Varlberg. That's why I have to get back to my train as quickly as possible and to get out of Komkalsgrad. And you cannot find him without the train? The train is one of his last inventions. So is Oscar, the automaton engineer. I get the feeling that the two of them are going to lead me to him. Did you hear that, James? I might see Hans again. I have dreamed so long of meeting my dearest sweetheart again. Oh, if only I could sing. If only I were in Paris, I would ask George for that miracle cocktail. The one that only he knew how to make. Wouldn't I, James? Yes, madam. As you have frequently said, without that famous cocktail, your French tour would have probably been cancelled. I don't understand. An extraordinary tale, my dear. It was December, and it was terribly cold and damp. I had to play the role of Tatiana that evening at the opera. But since the morning, I had lost my voice. It drove me completely mad with worry. I don't know how George, the barman at the Moritz Hotel, heard about my affliction, but he brought me up a cocktail that he had invented. A strange concoction. But it turned out to be a miracle cure. My voice returned to me in an instant. That's amazing! That's just what we need. We're going to mix you up a cocktail. Ah, my dear child. It is impossible. George never told me the recipe of the drink. He loved to keep his trade secrets. He said it made him absolutely irreplaceable. <laughs> well, I'm going to get George to tell me. He hasn't yet met with my powers of persuasion. Look, please, you absolutely have to come with me to Kamikalsgrad. It's the only way I'm going to get my train back and be able to carry on my journey. Your train? That's right. I've been traveling on this amazing locomotive with this automaton engineer. He isn't a million light years away from your James. <laughs> Do you hear that, James? An automaton? You have a twin brother? How delightful. And I thought I was the only person alive able to put up with such a peculiar butler. Permit me to express my surprise, madam. Surely the fact that I remain in your service guarantees my uniqueness. Oscar isn't my butler, though. He has a great independence of thought. Sometimes he does whatever suits him. Just like you, James. Isn't that funny? Madam, we'll not be surprised to hear that she is strongly advised not to undertake a journey that, unless I am very much mistaken, will tire her needlessly. James... 
Only one of us will make that decision, and that person is me. I'm very curious to meet your automaton, my dear. Where is it? He had to stay with the train in Kamkalsgrad. The director used his hands for the final touches on his pianist. It's the same pianist that will accompany you when you sing. How quaint. Another automaton. And this one can he even play along with me? Play for me? Ah, oh, why does my voice abandon me so now? You must have had a fantastic life. So exhilarating. Ah, much more than you could ever imagine. I used to sing the finest melodies of the moment in the most fantastic theaters around the world. I have been hailed by kings and courted by princes. Grown men would sink to their knees when they heard the first notes of my recital. My voice could break crystal glass and hearts, many hearts. I'm not surprised. Then one day sickness steals away the gift life has given you. My voice started to betray me. I started to get migraines. My health failed. They sent me here to let this spa town weave its healing spell. I was only going to rest for a month, but then the month became a year and the years get longer. But you look so healthy to me. Oh, thank you, my dear. I'll let you get a bit of rest. Thank you for listening to me. It was a real pleasure, my child. You are a charming young lady, and simply talking to you has warmed my soul. I've come to say I'm sorry for the fountain. I hope I haven't caused too much damage. But it's the best idea I could find to actually meet Madame Romansky. Oh, it's no problem. I mean, who even looks at the stupid fountain these days? So, you're big buddies with Romansky. Just what was it you said to get in her good book so quickly? I just asked if she could come with me to sing in a factory. Romansky, sing? It's been a year and a day since she last sung anything. Bleeding surprise she's going with you. We'll see. There's always hope and, well, persistence. And you certainly have a lot of that. No denying it, madam. So you think Madame Romansky will never sing again? I don't think so, no. There's no way you could help me in my research, is there? Once upon a time, but today, no way, José. Goodbye, Mr. Felix. You haven't changed your mind, then. I could do you a good deal on the royal suite. Thanks very much, but I really must be going.
Madame Romansky, would it be possible to... Do you have my cocktail? No, not yet, but... No buts, dear. No ifs. If I don't get my cocktail, I won't go with you to Konkosgrad. What are you waiting for? Did you hear that, James? This situation is quite unbearable. I quite agree with you, madam. This young lady clearly is quite incompetent. We really should abandon the whole idea. No, don't say that. This cocktail is important to me as well. Go on, my dear. Show us what you're made of. Hello, Hotel Moritz? The reception here. Can I help you? I'd like to talk to Mr. George. He's a barman at your hotel. I'll connect you with the bar. Just a moment. Hello, Hotel Bar? Hi. I'd like to talk to George, please. George? You mean Mr. George? Uh, yeah. Probably. Uh, he must have been a barman at the Moritz in the 50s. Well, don't want to disappoint you, but Mr. George stopped working here quite a while ago. What was it about? I've been told that Mr. George had a recipe for a fantastic cocktail, and only he knew the ingredients. I absolutely must know what was in it. It's a matter of life and death. I'd love to help you, ma'am, but you see, old George, now he knew a lot of cocktails. One hell of a barman and one hell of a reputation. He did write down his recipes before he left, but if you can tell me which one you were looking for exactly... Uh, I don't know. There are a lot of them, you say? Yeah. The Paris Peking Shuffle, the Deep Green Secret, Boco Poco, Blue Helena, Red Mambo... Helena! Yeah, that's the one. The Blue Helena. Right, I'll take a look. Blue Helena, you say? Let's see. One measure of vodka, one measure of blue carasso, one measure of honey, a dash of lime and ice cubes. Shake it all together and Bob's your uncle. Perfect. Thank you very much, sir. You have been most helpful to me.
My God. Ah. From what backwater of hell did you find this potion? Are you trying to poison me? It's a... Uh, uh, a blue Helena. That is impossible. The blue Helena had a color that was like... Um, and an aroma like... Um, you understand? Its texture was not quite so... Um, one thing is for certain. This is no blue Helena. Make an effort, my child. Right. I guess I'll try out another mix. Hi. It's me again. Uh, could you give me that blue Helena recipe again, please? Why, sure. One measure of vodka, one measure of blue carasso, one measure of honey, a dash of lime and ice cubes, and shake! Got it. Thanks a lot. My God! Ah. It's a... a... a blue Helena. That is impossible. Right. I guess I'll... Doesn't look like that works.
My God! Ah! From what it that is right. My voice. My God, that is atrocious. Horrific. It was too good to be true. George's Blue Helena is powerless. Ineffective on the voice of an old woman. But your voice is perfect. Don't be so down on yourself. You just need to warm up a bit, that's all. After all these years, it's to be expected. No, no, I am very grateful for all your efforts, but really, I cannot go on stage with such a puny, pathetic voice. My performance would be so poor. I would get such bad reviews. You've just got to get your confidence back, hasn't she, James? I must concur, madam. It sounds to me like your voice is fully restored. James, be quiet. You are a sniveling little creep. The Blue Helena really does have a magical effect. Your voice is sensational. I am not convinced. If my voice has really returned, it is not ready. It is still not powerful enough. I tell you you're wrong. The Calm Calls grad director is going to be amazed. My dear, how little you know. I remember a time, madam, when you would test your vocal prowess by breaking crystal tableware and decorations. Ah, those were the days. <laughs> Shards of crystal. I could never do that now. My voice. My God, what have I done? My voice has returned. Did you hear that, James? My voice, my voice has returned. Your voice is still as magnificent as ever, madam. But please don't forget, you're no spring chicken these days. Time has taken its toll. And you're not the toy boy you once were either, James. I hope you have fun on your own. Madam, leaving you is quite out of the question. Don't be stupid, James. What would you do there? Your place is here. You must prepare my return. Madam, I won't insist. Adventure is not an integral part of my action functionalities. Maybe you're right, madam. As ever. Do I understand correctly that you're going to go with me to Comcallsgrad? You do, my dear. We're going on tour, my dear. Anchors away! I'll go back to the airship to prepare my departure. You can join me there when you're ready. James! Take me to my room. I must prepare. Quick! Quick! What are you waiting for? My fans are waiting for me. Are you sure you're sure about this, madam? Shut up, James, and put your foot on it. <laughs> 